What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Talker Tap. Thank you guys for supporting the podcast. For today's guest, I have a three stripe blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Triforce teammate. Please help me welcome Vin Tedesco. What's up, Vin? What's going on, bro? Not much, not much, man. Um, I want to thank you publicly. Thank you for coming on here, especially last minute. Dude, I'm happy to be here, man. Yeah? Yeah, it's a pleasure awesome. to be here talking to you. Have you ever uh, been in any type of podcast before? No, I was on uh, Beverages with Brad on the Golden Mic on YouTube. You can check that out. Uh, yeah. He's a good friend of mine. He's a comedian, and uh, he's a really good editor, too. So it was a cool video. I was on there a couple times. Oh, okay. It's on YouTube. And it's him inviting you it was actually me. It was me and him. It was kind of like an interview. Yeah. Yeah. And we were just talking. He said some funny shit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay. And um, tell me about your jujitsu journey because I met you as I think it was just a blue belt, and now you said you have three stripe, which I just learned. Mm-hmm. And if you want to talk about how you first started in the gym or whatever, yeah. yeah. Tell me about that. So I started out. I think uh, I started jujitsu way back, man. I was like. Uh, a little kid like second grade how old are you now actually i'm 18 awesome so um you're looking at like second grade third grade maybe yeah and that's when i first started under uh candace rushton i'm not sure if you know who she is no oh, she's an amazing coach man she was my first ever coach and um awesome yeah i loved it i loved it but eventually i i did branch out into other sports you know because you're in school, right? And I'm yeah. doing jujitsu, but everybody else is doing like the regular sports, like football, baseball. I know. And they're all talking about it. So it's like, oh man, I, I kind of wanted to do that. So I, I tried out baseball, you know, football. Eventually I did wrestling in middle school. Oh, okay. Um, so like I, I did a bunch of other sports, but eventually I, f- I came full circle and went back to jujitsu. Oh, nice. I took a, a break too. I was going to, I started out in Timberill. I think I mentioned that. Um, But like I started in 2011 and I, I like went back to it, went back and forth, but that's really cool. When did you feel like you caught the bug and that you fell in love with it? I mean, I loved it right away. Yeah. I, I had, a, I loved cool. it right away from the beginning, man. It's just so fun. Everything about it, like mm-hmm. the technical aspect and uh, it takes a lot of the athleticism out of the picture because if someone has better yeah. technique than you, they're going to fuck you up. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's, one of the my favorite aspects of jiu-jitsu. No, I agree. Um, now, how was it different than, for you, how was it different than studying and practicing wrestling? You said you did it in middle mm-hmm. school. How different was it for you? Yeah, I actually did wrestling in middle school, and I did wrestling somewhat at the high school level, uh, senior year. I, um, oh, okay. So the difference for me, it's like wrestling's uh, wrestling's more of a, uh, gritty grind sport you know what I mean mm-hmm. um, I mean it's still still a great sport I love wrestling too yeah but um, for me train the difference is like uh, when you're in wrestling and it's and when you're in a wrestling practice like you know what's you know what's up you know what I mean <laughs> yeah it's it's a real like I said gritty feeling but in jiu-jitsu it's, it's a little more light I would say not mm-hmm. like lighthearted you know what I mean like mm-hmm. um it's it's an interesting contrast, but I love them both. Yeah. No, I, I definitely know what you're saying because I've heard people in the same sentence put wrestling with throwing up together more than they have with jiu-jitsu. <laughs> and I have done it in high school for like a month. And it was intense all the time. Mm-hmm. It was just a lot of drilling. And I've heard even with people who do it in college, you're just always going at it. And even other states that are really good at wrestling that's what they do year round so i mean you do that with jujitsu because you come and go in the classes as you want so you can keep doing it year round but it's a different um like aggression yeah yeah so but which one do you think transfers over better to one another do you think wrestling transfers over easier to jujitsu or jujitsu transfers over easier to wrestling that's a tough one. I mean, for me, I did jujitsu first, and it, it, yeah. it still transferred over pretty well. Um, but I see wrestlers all the time, man, and and they'll mm-hmm. pick it up like right away. They'll pick up jujitsu right away, mm-hmm. and um, it, they both really translate well with mm-hmm. each other. 
and they can you could if you have a background in one, it's not going to be that hard to learn the other. Right. Do you know any other languages? Any other languages? Yeah. Nah, man. I don't know mm-hmm. any other languages. Okay. I was going to try to put it to like, if I know Spanish, so I can sort of understand Portuguese. Oh, yeah. Or that, that's like actually, that. that's a good way of putting it. It's kind of yeah. like that. Like people who are bilingual, once they learn one language and then they can, they can learn another one easily. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like that. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd agree with you yeah. on that. And um, before I went on for too long, I wanted to um, have you bring up, you said you were something about a, a rash guard you said yeah, you wanted yeah, to yeah. talk about? I, I got these uh, rash guards I'm, I'm making. They're called uh, Andiamo, mm-hmm. which means let's go in Italian. Nice. And um, the first one I got coming out, uh, I sent you a picture of it. You did. It's, it's a black rash guard with like the, a bull on it. So I'll be selling those for like 45 bucks. Not bad. Okay. How'd you get the idea of the using the bull? Well, like it's, it's going back to my friend Brad. Um, he always used to call me like the little bull when when I first started training. When I'm, we were both white belts, he was like, "This kid's a little bull," you know, and it kind of just stuck. Yeah. So uh, he gave me that nickname uh, when I first started training. When we were both white belts, it, mm-hmm. it was pretty cool. I kept it; it just sticked. Do you think that you'll ever get a tattoo of a bull? I think I, mean, I don't have any tattoos, but if if I end up getting tattoos, a bull is probably on the short list. <laughs> <laughs> is tattoos not your thing, or no? I'm I. I want a tattoo. It's mm-hmm. just I want to make sure I really want it. You know what I, I mean? Because it's forever. It's permanent. No, I know. So um, it's I wouldn't mind getting a tattoo. I know I'm 26 and I still don't have one. So <laughs> like, there's nothing stopping me from going anymore, except like money wise. But um, other than that, like. You feel like you want one, and then you kind of regret it, and you go back to it. Yeah, that's that's one of my main things. I don't want to regret having yeah. it. So if, when I want, I w- when I get a tattoo, it's it's gonna be something that I want forever, you know. And I'm mm-hmm. like set on it. So just a deciding factor, you know. Yeah, deciding. I think if you um when you continue doing jujitsu, and then you get to like brown belt and black belt, and if you still happen to use that name, like the gotta, bowl, and you gotta do it right. Yeah, at that point, it's like, yeah. I think one day I'll get a tattoo of jujitsu somewhere. Yeah. Because it means that much. But like something that symbolizes it, like a bull, you'll know that that means jujitsu. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, I did uh, four years of Shotokan karate, and I want the, the Shotokan, it's like a tiger, and I want that tattooed on me. I don't know where, and I don't know when, but it's going to happen. It. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I want someone to do it in uh, New York. There's a, a shop called Bang Bang. And um, I've seen, like, I follow them, and they do a lot of good tattoos. And the way that they do it, it's just awesome. Yeah. But um, do you have any hobbies? Yeah, I actually have a couple hobbies, man. Uh, jiu-jitsu is probably my biggest hobby. But mm-hmm. um, right next to jiu-jitsu, reptiles. I actually I yes. keep reptiles in... Um, that's a big hobby of mine too. Eventually, I would want to breed them, mm-hmm. but as of right now, I'm just keeping them as pets, and uh, I really enjoy it. How did you get into uh, reptiles, man? Uh, I just growing up, I always been like uh, so curious with animals and stuff. I I I, uh, I really like. I used to love dinosaurs, man. I still do, yeah. and um, they're like little dinosaurs and, yeah. and tanks, so. I What's agree. more badass than that? <laughs> Dude, I know. I think about uh, alligators and crocodiles. Like, I just looked at a picture on Instagram of the Nile crocodile, and it just always reminds me of a, of a dinosaur. They're, yeah, they practically are. Yeah, I think, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I think they've outlived, well, definitely outlived, but they've lived before dinosaur age, and, like, they've just managed to survive even throughout and after. Like, they they were there before dinosaurs and no. they're there after yeah you, you look true? at a you look at a, an alligator or something and the first thing you think of is it's prehistoric yes definitely i heard they also have peanut brains peanut brains <laughs> is that true literally like the size of a, of, a, of a peanut i don't know man maybe i, I mean i'd believe it <laughs> yeah oh i thought what about uh do you know like the anatomy of animals of no, like not, reptiles and stuff i mean a little like I know how, like, I, I know how to keep them. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah, yeah. I have to take care of them. And as the caretaker, you know, what comes with that is a lot of research. 
And um, my favorite species is the Euromastix. And um, it's actually a desert-dwelling lizard, and they need it very hot. The hot spot needs to be somewhere between, like, 124 to 127 degrees. You know what I mean? So there's, there's a lot of... Times. Yeah. Well, the hot spot. That's just, like, the basking area. You know what I mean? But then at night, it will yeah. shut off, and there'll be a night light. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so it's just a lot of variables, but it's also a lot of learning. It's just like jujitsu. You know, you start jujitsu. Mm-hmm. When you first start, you're not going to know how to do every move right. Mm-hmm. But when, once you get into it and you really have a passion for it, then you start fixing everything and you start, um, what's a good word? You start to really um, polish everything up. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah, it's yeah. the same thing with reptiles, man. Just keeping them like, you do your research and then it's just an endless, endless, endless task of research, which I'm fine with because I enjoy it. I enjoy mm-hmm. learning about them. It doesn't feel like. It doesn't feel work. like, like yeah, it doesn't feel like. um Like, like it's homework. It, yeah, it doesn't feel like that to me because, you know, I, I love the animals and it's yeah. so interesting to me. Yeah. So um, it, it's, it holds my interest. It. It really does. So mm. whenever uh, whenever I'm lurking, looking at anything for like my lizards, mm-hmm. it's um it's just like jujitsu. Like if I'm looking up moves, same thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What do you look it up? What? YouTube. You just YouTube. Oh, no, YouTube. I'm in a couple groups online too, where, oh, which wow. is really good because it's that's it's how I know you really like it. Yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of other keepers, especially like expert keepers. Wow. And if I have any questions, I'll immediately ask them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, so, so if anything was qu- I had was questionable, I'll bring it up to someone who's an expert, like halfway across the country that knows everything there's to know. Yeah. And they'll just answer me and I'll get my answer and boom, it, that's it. I learned, you know, right there. That's awesome. What about something that recently you've had to learn that you had, you have to, like, I have to ask this guy. Yeah. So, um, one of the biggest questions we're keeping Euromastics is the substrate. And it's what a, is a Euro? A Euromastix? It's, it's, yeah, Mastix. It's, um, I'll show you a picture if okay. you want. Yeah. Uh, I actually have it on my home screen. <laughs> Dude, it's like my, it's like my baby. Here. And I'll send this to you too, so you can put it on the podcast if you want. I will. That's, I will. That's wow. the ornate Euromastix. Is that yours? Yeah, that's mine. Wow. They have those spiky little tails, so they'll, oh, they'll, wow. uh, I've wedge, never, they'll wedge themselves in rocks and leave only the tail hanging out. So, so like predators, they're not gonna want to bite the spiky tail. You know what I mean? Why did they leave the tail out? You said? Well, because that's they'll whack it. Like if something tries to eat them, yeah, they'll uh, smack their tail around in their face or something. You know oh, what I mean? It's okay. spiky. Can it can it go forward this way? Up. What do you mean? It like can't go like it can't go like a scorpion. No. Yeah. You, it can go like side to side really quick. Oh, so like okay. you can flick it at something, you know what I mean? Dude, that's sick. You see the colors on it? That's an ornate. Yeah. Ornate Euromastics. Ornate. What's the ornate part? How big is this thing anyway? Oh, it's about that big. It looks like a, kind of like a pine cone. <laughs> it's tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's what, it, that's what it's built like. How big is it, you said? Oh, uh, it's like, it's like that big. Wow. It's like. Don't they get bigger? Some lizards do. This species, nah. This species doesn't. I have a bearded dragon, oh. too. That's he, awesome. He's pretty big. <laughs> Bearded dragons get... No, that's a Komodo. A Komodo, Komodo dragons. You can't you? even get those, man. Yes, right. <laughs> that, but that's, those, those things are crazy, man. I, I don't know. want no fucking part of a Komodo. <laughs> <laughs> you <don't. laughs> You're not going to be like the uh, lizard version of um, Tiger King. It's no, like, yeah, no. no. Definitely not, man. Dude, <laughs> that's crazy. I've seen them. Not in person. I don't even know where they are, but... You've, They're vicious. Vicious? Yeah, man. Yeah? What do you know about them? I mean, I, I just seen uh, a few documentaries or videos and whatnot on them. They're just, uh, like, you, you wouldn't want to run into one. Put it that way. <laughs> wow. Like, you know what I mean? That I, I believe they're territorial. Oh, wow. Too. So, I mean, not not particularly the, you, the creature you want to walk past or, or yeah, be near. <laughs> it's like walking into somebody's house. Yeah, exactly. Like, like you're you're in his home. Yeah, if, you, if his territory. Yeah, right. You th- yeah, because like, I think we think land is just land, but not realizing that it does belong to some creature. Exactly. Yeah. 
in this case, a Komodo dragon. And uh, that to me, a Komodo dragon makes me think of a, of a small dinosaur. Yeah. The no, way that, that it looks. That's another thing that's pretty prehistoric looking. Yeah. And um, it's powerful too, so. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen actual videos of it. I've just seen pictures. Oh, I'll send you a couple. I got I got okay. some saved on my Instagram. I'll send over. What's your favorite type of lizard? A Euromastix. The, the oh, yeah, ones yeah. I have. Those okay. Are my favorite, man. Oh, wow. Because Just because not only are they cool looking, yeah, they have the best temperament. Huh. Best temperament. They're super friendly. They're like little old souls. They're so oh, friendly, wow. man. Yeah. Old souls. How long do they live for? They live a while, man. They could live up to 30 years. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. I wish they were like... Like dogs could live that long, but I know me too, man. I love my dogs too. Don't get me you have don't dogs. Get twisted. <laughs> okay. I have a uh, a Frenchie, French bulldog. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's actually my dad's, but man, I love dogs too. <laughs> okay. Um, have you? Do you remember your first animal, like, as a my pet? First animal as a pet. Um, growing up, we had a couple of boxers that uh, I love them, man. They were they're such great dogs too. Um. So I guess dogs would be the first pet I ever had. Do you ever remember the first pet you think you had? Like, I had a ladybug, but like a long, really long time ago. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, it's mine!" Until it flew away because I knew oh, it like, needed to eat. Oh, so something I that caught? Th- yeah, I think yeah. like oh, um, my first lizard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was little, man, I um, I think they're called a walking stick. Have you ever heard of those? Mm-mm. It's it, it's it pretty much an looks insect? like a stick. It's an insect. It pretty much looks just like a stick. And that's why it's like camouflage, essentially. It oh. looks just like a stick. But it can walk. It walks around, you know. It's an insect. It's, it's pretty cool. I found one of those. That was probably my first. I know it's an oddball, but it's it's no. the first, man. That's sick. Yeah, I know. Those are cool. What, did you think it was a stick at first? I know it was a stick and... Um, I think my mom was like, "No, that's a walking stick." I was, I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound pretty cool. I, and it doesn't turn any other color. Um, I'm not sure about the colors that it changes, but I don't think it changes colors. I'm pretty sure it yeah. stays the same color because of uh, camouflage. Like it, it blends right. in the the. It stays in like the trees. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it. That's the purpose. Yeah, to blend in. Right. And if it's going to eat there, I'm assuming it eats like leaves. Maybe leaves, maybe even smaller insects. Mm-hmm. That would be uh, cool to find out. I had no idea I was coming to talk about a walking stick. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> those, those are cool, though. I've, yeah. Uh, I've never seen one in person. I don't think. Like, I wonder if I've seen it and then it turned, like, I thought it was just part of a tree or something or it was a stick. Are they brown? You said they're brown. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're like brownish. Yeah. Oh, okay. The one I've seen was not the color of a of a tree like that shade. Exactly like it, it looks. Oh, okay. It looks like a stick. Not like this brown. Not it's like, like very table. thin, like an oak or like a like a tree. Yeah. It looks just like a stick. Very thin, very thin legs, and really the only thing that gives it away is when it moves. Whoa! It looks that much like a stick. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Those things are cool. Do they move a lot? Oh, the, I'm. From what I, I remember, they're pretty where slow. Did, where did you find one? Oh, I just found one outside, man. Was this in uh, Cranston? Yeah, yeah. Get out of here. Dude, I'm being honest. What? It was a walking stick. <laughs> what happened to it? I, I don't remember. You actually caught it? I I don't think I ended up touching, but I walked up to it and I was like, what's this? Is it a sticker? Like, why is it moving? <laughs> like, <laughs> And my mom was like, oh, it's a walking <laughs> stick. And I was like, why? You know what I mean? <laughs> did you think that it was a, an insect or did you think like, this is a stick that's walking? I didn't know what to think. I seen that stick, man. As soon as it started moving, I thought I was losing my fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. I can, I can imagine. You, um, You're being a kid. You uh, looking forward to the fights tonight? Uh, Brian Ortega and Chang Sung Jung. Dude, I was actually, yes, but I was actually talking to um, my friend John. Um, we were talking about uh, Vasil Lomachenko versus Joseph. I think that's his name. I'm sorry, guys, if I mess up, but he's fighting tonight. Mm-hmm. And um, 
He's a really. Do you follow boxing? I don't yeah, follow, I follow boxing him a little bit, but I know who he is. He's he's like one of the best in the world, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was he, the best. Well, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to reach here, but he was like one of the best in amateur boxing, transferred over. And from what I read, it was on his second fight. He fought for the title. Like, you don't do that in boxing. Mm -hmm. You build up slowly. It's not like MMA, where MMA, like, you can have a rapid race to the top, right? In MMA, I feel. Yeah, in MMA, you can have a rapid, like, jump to the top. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like in MMA, you can have a lot more, a lot less fights. Like, boxing. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't want to say that it feels padded, but there's a lot more fu- more fighting in, in boxing anyway. But um, Lomachenko, I, he lost a split, I believe, and then he fought again in like a couple more fights, and he actually won. And then he just like fought another time and won another title. So this guy's great, and he's very technical. Um, actually, um, that is I found out Gary Belletto's favorite striker. So he gets a lot of. Like ideas from him, I would assume. Shout out to Gary Belletto. Gary, Batman. Batman. hi Gary, <laughs> if you made it this far, <laughs> Batman. Um, so yes. Um, what the heck was I saying? So oh, you're talking about Lomachenko. Well, I was I yes. was asking you about the Brian Ortega fight. Oh, that also too. Uh, that's on Fight Island, isn't it? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited. Um, Zombie last. I don't remember when he. If he did le- he fight Frankie Edgar last? Was that his last fight, Frankie Edgar? You know what? Was, but it wasn't Frankie Edgar's last fight. No, no, because Frankie Edgar's last fight was Pedro Munoz, right? At, at bantamweight. Yes, and he lost. No, no, he won. Yeah? He won the decision against Pedro, but he lost to the Green Zombie. Oh. Yeah. Oh, he did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So Frankie Edgar didn't go to um, flyweight. That, mm, was I wrong? He went to thirty five. Oh, went okay. down to thirty five from forty five. Oh, I'm thinking of um, Garbrandt. No, the one before that. Um, they fought for the flyweight title. TJ. No. Um. Oh gosh. Thing he has a his wife, Joseph Benavides. Oh yeah. Yes, I'm thinking of him. No. Oh, I guess. Did, so Frankie Edgar's last fight was a win? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Oh, wow. But yeah, after... um, I thought it was... um. His last fight was with the... Was he Me- Mexican? With who? He got elbowed in like the last second. Who's that? Co- um, Korean Zombie got elbowed in the last second. Oh, was that, like a that was, I think that was not his last fight, but the fight before... Yeah. And you're talking about Yair Rodriguez. Yair, yes. Right? yes. Yeah, that was a crazy fight, man. Crazy fight. Wasn't it five rounds, too? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah. It was Main awesome. event. And then it was the last, literally the last second, if I'm not mistaken. But, dude, that was sick. And um, I don't know who was winning that fight, or I think uh, Zombie. I don't even know his, his real name. But um, I think he was winning, and then he lost with the elbow. But I'm excited because um, Korean Zombie is like a he's a stand up guy, literally. Like he stands up and fights, and I think he has like a. Jeez, I don't follow MMA. <laughs> <laughs> you, you okay? <coughs> I'm good, man. Oh, jeez, I feel like I need to get you like a, a water or something, right? Oh, you want water? <laughs> I can get you water. Nah, it's all I good, can try man. to reach from the back. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so um, Korean Zombie is like very forward. I feel uh, last time I remember. Jeez, see, this is why I well, don't. I, I mean, don't really could, study. He's called like the zombie because he can take so much damage. Keep going. yes, that's what I I mean to say too. Like like that. But Brian Ortega is really good at jujitsu, and um, he practices with Hannah Henner, mm-hmm. Henner Gracie. So I'm excited. Um, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Are you excited? Wait I'm a minute! I'm super excited, you. man. <laughs> I yes. don't know who's gonna win that fight. It's a Where are you gonna fight. watch it? Where? Yeah, probably in my house, man. Okay. I'm not going out for it, but mm-hmm. it's gonna be a good fight. Yeah, it's gonna be a great fight. They're both really good, man. Mm. If it goes to the ground, even that—I mean, on the ground, 
that would be interesting to see, like, because they're both good grapplers. Oh, I didn't know if. Uh, I mean, yeah, he had that twister finish, right? Yes, he did. Wow. Yeah, so, so like, it, that would be Sick. interesting to see them grapple. Sick. It would be. Wow. Um, I think. Who do you think is gonna win? If I had to say, if I had to put my money on it, I would probably say. Because I think that um, this fight is for the title. The title? No, well, not um, the title. I'm sorry. The title contention. Yeah, it probably is. Um, I don't know. Winner if... might be the number one contender, right? I'm That's what say, I'm saying. Uh, man, I don't know. I'm going to say Chan Sung Jung. I'm going to say the Korean zombie. I just think he's been fighting for so long. He's got so much experience. Mm. But I wouldn't be surprised if Brian Ortega pulled something out of the hat or submitted him, you know? Mm-hmm. Good. It's going to be a great fight. Who else is fighting? Yeah, it would. It is. I'm not sure about the rest of the card. I, honestly, I usually do know the whole card, but as far as this one goes, I'm not sure. Did you watch um, the fight, the fights on Wednesday? Did CS? you know about them? Yeah. i seen a couple. i seen the Gotti fight. Yeah. i seen the Tyler King fight. But I think that's it. I was just, i seen it on Instagram. Tyler King is the heavyweight one? Yeah. I actually didn't know them. It was a vicious, vicious KO, man. I, I hope mi- he's all right. I missed it. Yeah, that ended up on ESPN. MMA. That's actually how I saw it. ESPN. Yeah, it was that crazy. It was wild. It's a highlight man. knockout. That, that's as good as you want it, honestly. That was vicious. <laughs> yeah, it was, and I missed it. I think I was. I had to pick up my mom in between fights. Um, you see the main event? I did. Yeah, I, I didn't stayed get to see the whole it. Thing. I just know what happened. Uh, first fight. I seen I, like highlights on Instagram. I didn't get to see the fight in its entirety. Yeah, I don't know Nick Nick's last name, but um, um, John, um, he was like, obviously, uh, like people were expecting him to win. He that's He's why, supposed to be the next big thing. Like, yeah, that's what it's built to be, and um, you can see it. You know, him main eventing um. I thought he was actually going to win. I'm not going to lie. Um, because just the way that he's been fighting, all his other fights were like in the first round. He's undefeated? He was up like until that before, point. Before this fight? Yeah. yeah. I think he was like 5-0. and oh. wow. And I actually saw him fight once. I went to CES. I think it was the same night that John was fighting. And John Duma. Mm-hmm. I love you, John. Yeah, shout out to Duma. Johnny boy. Um... I'm not sure if uh, Gary Belletto fought on that night too, but I saw John. Dude, there were people like there that I've never seen before. Like people were shouting for John. I think John had a huge crowd that night. I don't know where they came from, but even from the the first fight, I don't know if that was his debut, but he had a great showing, knocked the guy out in the first round, took him a couple minutes. But I thought he was just going to go in there and dominate like he did with the other fights, but... Nick was a great contender, and actually, the first round, Nick, it um, it was going to John, John Gotti. I was like, okay, and and then the second round, Nick started to grapple with him and starting to take him down. And I was like, oh wow, so John is a little vulnerable. And it doesn't it doesn't seem like anyone was giving Nick a chance. I think so too. Going, going yeah. into it, going into because like you said, the, there's so much hype surrounding Gotti. Yeah, and like Joe Rogan was talking about him. Not long ago on his podcast. So like had it been anyone else, like Exactly. You wouldn't have you wouldn't have mentioned him. Yeah. I know I'm yeah. Because the name carries a lot. It does, man. It does. And a fighter, like especially in MMA when it's an exciting sport and it's new, relatively new. And you got the grandson of an American gangster. Yeah, I know. Great it's, story. It's perfect. It's easy to market too. Super easy. Yeah. It the work does itself, honestly. I don't think he's even ever done like interviews where he's promoted himself. He's just fought. The name is there. Like the main event, you see Gotti third and Nick. Sorry, I don't know your last name. But when you see that, like, okay. Yeah, I see what they're trying to do from, from this. And it was working too. Five and oh. Like, I honestly think this would have been um something where like at least you would have been in the uh, where you would have been in the um, contender series or had a shot to fight for something other than CES MMA. Yeah. 
Sorry, my friend is calling me. Oh, no worries. Okay. Winning. Okay. Awesome. So. He had a following. Yeah. Man. Like you said, he, he did. had a following from yeah. the get go. Like, I think he has like over 10,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah. I'm not surprised, man. <laughs> I'm not surprised either. He's easy to find. Um, he's going to be great, I think, nonetheless. I think the grappling was what cost him the fight. You could see it. Like, he was better at standing up than going to the ground, it seemed anyway, me as a fan mm -hmm. and someone who practices MMA. So, Nick actually, um, man, grabbed him, pounded him from the, from the top, and... Just handled that fight really well. Went to the cage. Took him down from the cage, I believe. He was stuck. And just two and three were his rounds. And that's how he got the fight. That's that's how it was scored, too. Name of the game. Yeah. Yeah, really. What do you think is going to happen in the Khabib Gaethje fight that's Ooh, coming up? Ooh. Thanks for asking. You know it's next Saturday, right? Yeah. That's coming up soon. Dude. Real soon. Yes. Um, I'm going to order that straight up. Um, yeah, man. I don't think it's going to... It's There's no unanimous decision with this. There's no going to... The, it's a five-round fight. It is. So, yeah, it makes it even less likely that there's going to be a decision because those two guys going at each other, I agree with you. Some Someone's going to... I'm so pumped for that. <laughs> what were you saying? Somebody's going to get a finish. It's yes. going to be crazy, man. Honestly, leaning towards Gaethje, man. You are. Yeah, man. Because if you watch some of his wrestling matches, like, okay, he didn't beat Jordan Burroughs by any means, but he stuffed a takedown. He stopped one of Jordan Burroughs' takedowns. When was this? Um, I'm not sure when it was, but just in general, Gaethje is a spectacular defensive Dude. wrestler, too. Not just a great wrestler. Even though he doesn't use it that much because he's a striker, his wrestling, especially defensively, it's it's pretty, pretty top notch. Yeah. So that's gonna be that's gonna be real interesting because I know everyone knows Khabib's wrestling is you know unreal. So yeah. His wrestling versus his takedown defense, that's gonna be interesting to see that unfold. You know what I mean? Yeah. I seen there was a video that was posted in the gym um, of AKA where DC brought in a, a like a top notch wrestler from i think it was high school mm -hmm. that was from uh his sc the school that he coaches at gilroy right okay i'm pretty sure okay uh, gilroy i'll California. go with what you're saying yeah because yeah, dc coaches in gilroy so i think that was one of his uh, yeah wrestlers yes and, it was uh, he he happens to be one of the top in the country and i did see that that was that was cool and then it was like nothing i know that was nuts it was which is like can this man be stopped I, know, I don't just, know. That, just a, his, like I said, his wrestling man. And it wasn't like he was striking. Sure. It is. It's not like he was putting things together. It was all grappling. Like, what do you have against someone who only wrestles? Like, this is what he does. And he's one of the greatest in the country. Nah. And it was his, like you said, it was in his element. He took it to him in his element. Like you said, it was just wrestling, straight up wrestling. Yeah. So that's impressive. That's really impressive. But everything Khabib does is impressive. It is, so. which is so exciting. I think uh, this is going to be one of the greatest fights for him. Um, it's so scary because it's Gaethje, and I don't know. Gaethje wants, like, the way that he talks, he's hoping that Tony would punch him in the nose so he can fix his his nose. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I see like, that. Like, who wants that? And then he says that he doesn't get nervous when he fights. He just goes in there, like... I almost believe him because everyone, even Donald Cerrone has said that he gets nervous when he fights and people throw up. Darren Till gets nervous. I felt that. Like, even at that level, you still get nervous. Like, what? And then it doesn't happen to Justin. Like, how dangerous is it for somebody to not be scared of what's in front of him, especially being a defending, undisputed champion? Like, Yeah, I know. I mean, it is the interim versus the real champ. So that's that's another thing, too. It's the interim champ versus the undisputed champ. That's going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the, the fight between Gaethje and Ferguson, that was a real eye-opener. Yeah. That really showed how elite Gaethje is. 
Dude, I, I thought, I thought honestly Tony was gonna win. Dude, going in that fight, I thought Tony was gonna win. I think majority of people would have said Tony is gonna win because everybody wants to see the Tony Khabib. But that too. Gaethje came in there. He put all that to bed, man. He put it all to bed. Ah man, he almost slept him. He hit him so many times, and he just looks so yeah, evil. Ferguson took so much punishment in that fight, man. That's not good. No, man. And I know he's a warrior, and I also didn't think it was a good idea that the fight before Justin, there was a canceled fight or whatever. Oh, the one with Habib, and then he still cut weight. Yeah, like he cut weight when he didn't need to, right? That's yeah. what happened, just to prove that he could make it. Or yeah, or that he was like champion mentality. Oh like yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I'll yeah. do regardless. And I was like cl- somewhat close to the fight, right? I th- yeah, it was. It was like three or four weeks after that. Yeah, so like he cut weight, and then three weeks, four weeks, or whatever, yep. he had to cut weight again. And he's he's a tall dude. It's probably not easy for him to get down. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. like he never misses weight, but it's definitely a task. You know it, what I mean? It is. Especially when you just did it too. Like you're supposed to do that when people fight. Like when they fight like every six months, four months. Yeah. That is expected. But twice in one month or however the time span was. Nah. But I thought like, oh, he's he has such heart. But and Justin, um, he lost two in a row. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then. To Poirier or Alvarez first and then Poirier, right? Who did he lose first? He to? lost to Eddie Alvarez and Poirier. I'm not sure about the order. I'm not sure which he lost first, but I know those are his two losses, Eddie Alvarez and Dustin Poirier. Which also tells you how good Dustin is. Yeah. Dustin's oh man. Dude. I that's also another one I want to talk about with you, with Connor and Dustin. That's gonna be crazy too. Mm-hmm. But um I definitely, definitely, definitely think that Justin is going to want to go for a knockout. Yeah. I can't help but think. Of course. He has such strong hands. Like, he'll... His left hook, dude. Oh, my God. His left hook that that he, he hit Ferguson with so many times. Mm. He's just so crisp. I can't think of it at the moment, but... But in general, Justin Gaethje is, is definitely the best matchup for Khabib, too, because... His striking, like, it's really top-notch. And his wrestling defensively, especially defensively, is is really, really good. So, like I said, if he could stop Khabib from taking him down, which is not an easy, that's not easier said than done, right? Yeah. If he can stop Khabib from taking him down, man, I think the fight's kind of in his favor on the feet. In mm-hmm. his, and it's kind of in his realm. Against yeah. Khabib, not to discount Khabib's striking, it's just Gaethje's a monster, man. I don't think Khabib's striking is nearly nowhere on the level that Justin's is. Yeah, and it was the same thing for Khabib wrestling. So it's just a matter of yeah. where the fight takes place. If it's on the ground, you know, it probably favors Khabib. Mm-hmm. If the fight's on the feet, it probably favors Justin. Yeah. But it, it's going to be super interesting just to see all, all of the uh, – Every area play out. Like, I'd like to see some clinch, too. Like, how it plays out in the clinch. How yeah. And um, even in uh, on the ground, like, if Gaethje gets taken down, can he get up? You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is, it's a tall order with Khabib. That's going to look very weird. Because, I don't know, Justin just seems so dominating. Mm-hmm. And for him to get dominated on, that's going to be weird. Yeah, I, I agree. But... I don't know what Habib's going to do if he, if he ends up getting clipped the way that Justin hits. And then you've seen in the Michael Johnson Whoa. fight, too. Have you seen that? Khabib versus Michael Johnson. I saw it. He actually got clipped in that fight. You know, oh, not, not many people know it because Khabib ended up winning the fight, but he yeah. did get hit. He got hit in that fight. You know, he's not he's not untouchable, yeah, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. He's human. Yeah. He's human. And Ally Quinta showed that. Um yeah, did you see that one? I did. It was five rounds. It was and a decision, right? And he took that fight on, what, two-day notice? Something like that. He was like supposed that. to fight something Paul Felder, stupid. right? Huh? He was yeah. supposed to fight Paul Felder. And then... Who was supposed to? Al? Al, I believe, on the same card. Mm. And um, Khabib was supposed to fight Tony. That fell out. And then he was supposed to fight Holloway, and that fell out. And then it ended up being Al Iaquina, Jeez. right? It went, right? Yeah, I don't know about Max, but... If that's, yeah, 
I don't know if uh, Tony got injured or something, but yeah, I think this was when he tripped on the wire. If oh, I'm not okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure he tripped yeah. on the wire. Oh man, and yeah. um, yeah, they did bring up Max to fight Khabib, mm. and then Max couldn't even cut the weight; he couldn't make 155. Wow. Yeah, because he was trying to cut weight. I think he was gonna make weight, but the commission stepped in. Yeah, that's what happened. Okay, and then Ally Quinta took the fight. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that's accurate. Okay. And um, I still think could be would have won against Max. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, against Max. Yeah, I, I, I can so. see that too. But I'm just saying, like, it was like, how about Khabib, man? He he says Tony, whoever they put in front of him, essentially, he's just taken. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's okay with the Tony, the Max, the Al. You know That's how awesome. many how many people would would be super difficult to negotiate with through that? Khabib. A lot just, of people. Are. He accepted all the fights, man. He's he's really That's what's a monster. Awesome. That's. Only adding to his legacy. Yeah, he's one of the. He already is one of the greatest, man. Yeah. How could he not be? I think he will be the greatest once his the end of his career plays out. If it ends up being undefeated and he I mean, hopefully he, fights GSP, that would be unreal. That would be unreal. That would cement it. No way. That even, was like even if he doesn't fight GSP, I'd say he's already the greatest lightweight. Definitely, I, I lightweight, agree. Greatest lightweight. Yep. Easy. And um, if he fought GSP and won, he could make an argument. He could make a case for being the greatest fighter. Wow. Because GSP is is one of the greatest fighters. Mm-hmm. And Khabib, if he if he's what would what would we be thirty and all with that fight? If he beats Gaethje and then beats GSP, that that's yes. uh, that's like you know yes. Nobody Perfect. goes thirty and all, man. That's like that's like boxing's fifty and all with Floyd. It is. It's basically the MMA equivalent. Yes, I agree. And it's all like the style. That's what I love MMA. Like he did that mostly with grappling. He his head is probably fine from it when he walks he's a out. Specialist. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's gonna be in his right mind because he didn't get hit all the time. He didn't end his career. He didn't take too much damage. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but moving on to. Connor and Dustin. Mm-hmm. What do you think? It's tough, man. Uh, you never know what you're going to get when, when, with Connor. He, he's always looked good in every one of his fights. Yeah. But it's a matter of seeing how Connor and Poirier will play out. Like, on the feet, I feel like whoever starts winning is going to just run home with the win. You know what I mean? Like, I don't see like someone... the other guy's going to have trouble recovering? Yeah, like, I feel like Connor gets ahead. Mm. He's He could be a front runner. And the same thing with Poirier. If Poirier gets, starts, starts doing well, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it's tough to say, man. I'm a big Dustin Poirier fan. Me too. Just uh, in general. Personality-wise, yeah, too. Yeah, he's he's, he seems like a good guy, and I always root for him. So, I'm definitely going to be rooting for him. Mm-hmm. And I also even I also think he's gonna win too. Not I'm not just rooting for him. Okay. And I I think I think he can win that fight, man. Yeah. How and so? Did you watch the first one? Yeah, that was that was interesting. It was at forty five, and and um, you know they've both cha- they've both evolved so much since then. Um, they have. That's what I love about Dustin. He was interim, wasn't he? When? When he fought the interim UFC lightweight, right? Yeah. When he fought Khabib, he was the interim. Who did he win the interim title? He won it against Max Holloway. Yes, which was awesome. That was awesome. To me, that's like Gaethje versus Tony. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. But but uh, Dustin is very technical. I love the way he fights. Dude, everything about Dustin's awesome. Yes. He's person. Yes. Fighter. He has the good fight, you know, the charity. You know that he has, yeah, some, yeah, yeah. Like, that's uh, when Habib lost. He was like selling his shirt. shirt. Yeah, yeah. He's for the yeah. donation, um, the charity. Super good dude. Um, yeah. Like I never met the guy, but just by everything he does, pretty much says says enough about the guy. I know. And he's a great fighter. I really think he's gonna On win top that of fight, that. man. I think so too, dude. It's different this time around. There's no. Um, he was like. Too into it the first time. I remember the, there was a lot of emotions, mm-hmm. and it's very personal, right? Yeah, but Connor didn't see it that way. It's like always all business with Connor, but um, with Dustin, 
he was like really mad. You could see it um, in the stare downs in the in the when you weigh yourself like the day before and they face off like you could see he's just really mad. And I think um, Connor even mentioned it some sometime or like Dustin mentioned it. I was like, I, I was too emotional. And um, yeah, this time is different. They're doing it for charity, too. Yeah. So it's like that's how different it is this time. It's, it's going to be weird. I'm pretty sure it's, They're like it's slated to be in uh, January. January 23rd. If yeah, 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 January 23rd. So, hey, it's not that far away. No. And um, he's using it, Connor's using it to uh, get him ready for Southpaw for Manny? Manny Pacquiao. Yes. Yeah, he's definitely shown interest in that fight as well. Who? Connor's shown interest in the Pacquiao, and Pacquiao's shown interest in Connor. That's so crazy to me that you can just... F- you can not just can, but he's fought Floyd, and now he's gonna fight Manny. I like, mean, look, we don't know yet. But okay, he he Fair he's enough. he wants to. He clearly wants to. Yeah, and, yeah. And um, in general, Connor does uh, he does it better than anybody else when you talk about just talking something into existence. Yeah, I love he, it. Yeah, you know what I mean. He does yeah. it better than anyone else because he's the biggest star in the sport. Yep, no so, doubt about it. So like the most followers um out of any other fighter in MMA. Yeah. So he gets what he wants, why. man. Yeah. Um have you seen all those uh motivated McGregor comments that people make? It's no. just funny. It's kind of like a meme. Like What do you mean like a sea level cane type thing? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, like uh that like father like when Cerrone was a father, he was motivated by his kid mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, exactly. Just like that. Like people would comment. I mean, like there would be like ESPN would post something about f- fights, even if it's a women fighter. And it's like someone would comment that's stupid. McGregor would win. And ro- like motivated McGregor would would finish them in like the first round. <laughs> it's just funny. Have you ever, so you ever came across I those? I, haven't, I always I make sure to like saying. them. <laughs> I get what you're saying. Kind of like it's like he's like this unstoppable force, right? Yeah, because it's just like, like to make light of the like the fact that like when McGregor's motivated, he'll do great, and when he wasn't motivated, he got beat. Like with uh, who did he lose to last night? Uh, last Khabib. loss was Khabib. Yeah. Yeah. So like people are saying, oh, he wasn't motivated, and now that he is, like he ran through Cerrone. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he did. And then um, if you want to talk about motivation, maybe even that first Diaz fight. Like, oh, yeah, lack of yeah, motivation yeah. There. So I, I kind of see where I see where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. dude, you give the Internet anything and they're yes. going to run away with it. <laughs> I know. It's funny. If you stopped, the Internet works so fast. If you stopped paying attention to any of that stuff and you came back five months later, you'd get so lost. Like. I don't know if you know the the Darren. Every time Darren Till posts something, they'll like someone Put will his comment face on it, right? Yeah, or like I got lost with that. I'm like, what's going on? And then people would comment on his on his post, like Darren, 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 like every everything. A lot of the comments would be Darren question mark. <laughs> and then it was something that had to do with Rob Whitaker, and he did he, talking about something, and then Darren mentioned like Rob question mark. Oh, okay. That's where it came from and <laughs> stuff like that. So, yeah, like I always have to make sure that I'm keeping up with the community or else I'll get lost. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. It'll blow up quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for you, didn't you tell me you wanted to fight eventually. What were your uh, dreams? Eventually, I'd like to fight, you know. Yeah. And, um, Even if it's just like an I'm idea. S- I'm just so young that I'm... Which I'm is crazy, by any. the way. I, I I forgot to mention, dude, the fact that you're 18. I think I met you when you were 16 and yeah. I first rolled with you. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I'm like, okay, I'm almost a blue belt level. Um, Yeah, I, I don't know him, but it shouldn't be that hard, right? And then I rolled with you and there, there was like just this pressure that you had. I've never felt Thanks, before. Man. <laughs> yeah, and you, and then when I found out you were only 16, I was like, what the heck? This is awesome. And uh, it was just great to experience that from you and i think that's when you came from a different gym no yeah yeah i remember i think i I think i remember you telling me that and um it was just 
different. Like I haven't forgotten the way that you feel when I grapple with you, especially because I haven't rolled with you in a while. I don't know yeah, dude, we'll definitely get some rolls in soon. Yeah. But um, I, I'm not going to put any pressure on myself, too, but I would love to yeah. fight eventually. Yeah. And I'm so young that I'm not going to commit to it until I'm ready, ready. Cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, but definitely. I would love to do it eventually. I it's It's been one of the things, like, on my bucket list. Like, I want to fight. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. But nothing I'm going to rush or jump into too fast. You know, I'm 18. I'm living life. Like, I'm no rush. Definitely. Tell us about the um, the competition. You just competed. Oh, And that's yeah. something I should have brought back in the beginning. Yeah, no no, no problem. Um, yeah, it was a good competition, man. It was interesting with all the guidelines. Because um, I'm not used that's to right. it with the masks and stuff. Like, you have to wear a mask when you're not competing and walking around. How does that, uh, does that affect Coaches you? Coaches have to wear the mask. It's it's just more of an annoyance. But I, you know, it's a guideline. You're going to follow it. But um, I know in between... When you finished, like, I feel not exhausted, but I was like, ah, oh, that was, that took a lot out of me when I finished that one. And then to be able to put a mask on while you're trying to recover from that. Yeah, yeah. like, you could have a grueling match, and then you, you have to put this mask on your sweaty face, like. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, the way around that, I just go to the bathroom, and, um, because you don't have to wear a mask in the bathroom, and I'll just oh, okay. kind of, like, uh, nice. just take a couple deep breaths, you know what I mean? That's but, smart. Um, yeah, and then I'll I'll go back out and put the mask on. Okay. But, um, it's it's no big deal. I mean, I don't even know. You probably are supposed to wear a mask in the bathroom. <laughs> Nobody checks up. Yeah. I just go back there. You know what I mean? And then I'll put the mask on if I need it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, it it was interesting, man. Definitely competing with all those guidelines and stuff. Like um, certain even at the weigh-ins, it was interesting. Like seeing all the people like spaced out with the masks, like. It it was um, mm. definitely something new, but um, and the match went well. The matches went well. Good man. Uh, it was a great experience. I love competing. You win, lose, draw, anything. I'm happy with it. I just love going out there and then representing Triforce. You know, putting it on the line. That's right. So uh, that's for me. That's all what it's all about. Right. I love it. And um, did you ever lose? Of course, I've lost. Yeah, <laughs> I've lost. I don't know. It just sounds like a surprise to me. But um, yeah, I have lost. Uh, it it's it's good to lose because you learn from it. You know yeah, what I mean? I agree. And and it also keeps you in check. It's like, oh wow, this guy's really good. He just whooped me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you, it makes it gives you motivation. You want to get better. You want to go back in the gym yeah. and you want to train harder. So losing is a v- a very good thing. You know, it doesn't seem like it. Some people overreact. Listen, if I go out there and lose a match, I'm not going to lose any friends. I'm not going to lose any family. Everyone's still going to love me. You know what I mean? So, like, it's not really the biggest deal to lose. When I lost, I actually gained that friend. I added him on Facebook. I mean, I haven't chatted with him, but we were really amicable. We were hugging it out when, when when he won, like... It was all good. That's what I love about jujitsu and competitions. Everyone's so respectful. Yeah, there's a, so much respect, man, and that, that's what the number one thing is. It's respect. So definitely, you know, from the beginning, you shake hands. At the end, you shake hands. It's all respect. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just a competition. It's just what it sounds like. You're there to compete. That's it. Have you ever volunteered? Volunteered for what? In any of the, like, I got to volunteer for tap cancer out. I I wore the red shirt. I watched over the matches. Um, I did the scoring. Oh, oh no! I've never. Volunteered. And then you get to compete for free. No, I haven't volunteered, but um, obviously I know a few people that that have. What was that like? It was awesome. Yeah, getting to watch everything happen. Um, it's a, a little nerve wracking because you're like, oh, I'm gonna have to do this later. Eventually, like it's inevitable. But like. You're you're vigilant, so you're not just relaxed. You have to pay attention to the people rolling and wait for your name to be called out, and you have to be ready for it all. So you have to be there early. And yeah. then by the time you're, you're – yeah. my match was like the last bracket, like the last Oh, wow. So you're sets. there from start to finish. Yeah. 
and it's awesome. You get to watch all this jujitsu. You're overwhelmed. It's Taking like it eating a three course meal. You're grabbing everything in and you're watching your friends compete because you have, you know, in between that, you're able to go and see them. But at the end of the day, you're like, oh, and I have to compete. And then you compete and it's like, oh, I just want to finish. You just want to get it done at the end. Yeah. And that goes for competing in general, too. Like, yeah, uh, that uh, anxiety build up. Like, you want to just get it over with. You know what I mean? Regardless mm-hmm. of the outcome. Because mm-hmm. it's just the unknown. You're just so. Yeah. It's just like you don't know yeah. what's going to happen. I agree with you so much. I felt that with grappling. I felt that with fighting. Anything competitive. You just like. Yeah, I feel good. And, and waiting. It's like a killer. It like, is. It is. I just want to know what happens. And then uh, it's cool when you're in it. You're so focused. And you feel the. The strength of somebody else and you're like a bull and pushing back and forth, seeing what technique they'll use and reacting to it. Do I actually know what I'm going to do? That's cool, too. Like to somebody that's never practiced with me, how am I going to react to their technique? That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent because you guys are, are learning different moves and you have your own games and it's just going to you, your games are going to clash and then one yeah. person's going to win. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. So going into that, like, you don't want to let anybody down. You know, you're, you're kind of like, you just want to do your best. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, man. And then every, it feels like every minute is like an hour. It's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then after, after the match, regardless of the outcome, mm-hmm. you feel so relieved. Like. You oh, do. I just got that done. I, I, you know, you feel good about it. You do. That, that's one of the best feelings there is, man. That's why I love competing so much. And how'd you do? The tournament? Yep. I ended up taking first place. Nice. It, it was nice, man. I already know that, but I just wanted. <laughs> I, awesome. I got two submissions: uh, a north south Dude. north south choke and a kimura. Awesome. So, you were you one side with the kimura, and then you brought him over. Well, I started in the mount, and then I flipped. I sw- flipped the side control, and immediately got the kimura. So oh, okay. He was on his hip. As soon as I went off the mount, he went to a hip. And oh yes. Yeah. Oh, he did that himself. Yeah, well, Ooh. I was in full mount, and then I transitioned to side control from full mount. Mm-hmm. And as I was transitioning, he kind of went to a hip. He came to a hip, and then I snatched the Kimura from there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did did anyone at the tournament give you trouble then? Um, the first guy I went against was really good. He caught me off guard. I didn't expect him to to be like uh, as strong as he was. Mm-hmm. And uh, he got me with a nice little uh, ankle pick takedown, and um, wow! And then I ended up getting uh, a half guard sweep on him, and I got on top. And then from there, I passed, and I got the north south choke. But he did ca- ca- catch me off guard with that takedown right away. Yeah. So uh, yeah, a little adversity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Um, so what's in it for your future? Like, I know you want to keep doing jujitsu, but yeah, of course. You know, where do you see yourself a year from now? A two year years? from now, two years from now, maybe even down the line even further. Um, definitely jujitsu. I'm going to still be doing jujitsu, man. I'm going to do it my for- forever until I can't. Awesome. And um, love to hear it. Like I said, I want to fight eventually. It's just, I don't Even wanna, if it's just one you're saying, I don't know what I you're. If I end up doing it, I probably would, would maybe have more than one, but I'm not sure. I definitely won. You know what I mean? Dude, I, I think you do amazing. Do yeah, just I'd love to, to do it. Alone. I'd love to do it, man. And it's just like, I'm just, I don't want to rush it. You know what I mean? Definitely. I don't want to, uh, you know, it's on It's on the oven right now. It's boiling. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's like, it's it's working its way there. Like, I want to learn so much more before I really step in a, a cage to fight. Definitely. So, I want to do that. And then, like, I got my reptiles coming up, too. So, Ooh. I got so much stuff going on, man. <laughs> I know. That's awesome. G- MMA and reptiles. Yeah, I love how those are two of your favorite things. Yeah, man. it's like everyone that I interview, it's always something different. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that you were so into reptiles. Yeah, man, I'm a I'm a huge reptile guy. <laughs> yeah, cool. Well, um, thank you so much. You know, it's. I hope you liked it, dude. I had like so the, much fun. Thank you for you having me. That's awesome. Before we go, I, I just want to give one more shout out to my friend Brad. It's uh, youtubecom slash the golden mic. He makes some of the funniest content you'll ever see. Awesome. Check him out. I'll even post it on the description yeah, somewhere. Definitely, man. To have that in there. Dude, thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, that's it, everybody. Thank you for joining in on Talk or Tab.